I'm Mike McMullen. I'm the president of the Carroll County Chamber of Commerce, and I'm happy to be here to uh, kind of kick off this candidates forum. I have a couple of quick announcements. First off, cell phones, if you would turn them off or on stun, something so it doesn't ring and interrupt any of our candidates as they're talking, I'd appreciate that. I'd like to thank uh, Carroll Community College for hosting this. How about a nice round of applause for these people here? They do a great job. Also like to thank uh, our uh, community media folks over here on the side. They are filming this and it will be on your website, I'm assuming, right, at some point. How about a round of applause for them too? <laughs> also thank you to all of our participants uh, to be here on this nice wet day. Let's give them a round of applause. And to all of you that battled this rain, I think I saw the ark kind of being built someplace out there. It's been raining pretty hard. But what better place to be on a rainy day than a nice, solid building, um, spending time with each other. So hopefully we'll have a good time here. Uh, basically, the way this is going to work, I'm going to introduce our two moderators. And then they're going to just kind of take off. They'll explain how things are going to go at that point, And we'll get a chance to hear from each one of the candidates. So if you could keep any discussions kind of down uh, right here on this side here. Stephen Jeppe is the Dean of the Division of Arts, Letters, Business, and Social Sciences at Carroll Community College. His current responsibilities include the oversight of seven academic departments at the Community College, where he has been employed for the past 14 years. His employment background also includes 30 years as a senior manager for R.L. Oatman and Associates, as well as over 20 years with the Maryland State Police. He has a Master of Arts degree with a concentration in Business Administration from Towson University, where he graduated with honors, and a Bachelor of Arts degree in English and Criminal Justice from the University of Baltimore, where he graduated magna cum laude. Mr. Stephen Jeppe. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Herb Smith. He's a professor of political science at McDaniel College where he also serves as Director of Government Relations. He's been employed at McDaniel College since 1973. He has served as an election analyst for WMAR-TV and currently serves as a political analyst for Maryland Public TV. He has a variety of experiences as campaign manager, consultant, and pollster for many Maryland political campaigns. Dr. Smith has a master's and PhD from Johns Hopkins University. He's the author of several books and scholarly publications, and he has won multiple outstanding teaching and professor awards at McDaniel College. Dr. Herb Smith. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Carroll Community College. Um, before we start with the questions, what we'd like to do is give each of the candidates a, a, a moment or two to introduce themselves, and each of them will have 60 seconds to do so. Once that's completed, they'll be asked a couple of questions, and each of them will once again be given three minutes each to answer those questions. And at the end, they'll be given one minute to sum up their points, and then it's one minute each. Uh, we're going to start with the introductions. You have 60 seconds, and we'll start at this end with Ms. Jones and work our way down the line. Or we also ask, by the way, each and every time you speak, you mention your name and the district for which you are running. Good evening, my name is Jackie Jones and I'm running for County Commissioner in District 1. I live in Tawny Town with my husband Lowell at Carroll Vista. I have uh, six grown children, 15 grandchildren and seven great grandchildren. So I'm a very proud great grandmother as well. I, I moved to Carroll, I am very interested in their county government. My roots are rural so I have a good understanding of the needs of my fellow District 1. Some, you're, no, <laughs> okay. I grew up on a farm on the Maryland's eastern shore and I understand the economics and agriculture business. I realize how important family farms are to the economic engine that drives much of this county. In the civil capacity, I served as a country for 16 years working as logistics analyst for the United States Naval Sea Systems Command building aircraft carriers. Here I gained a wealth of management experience working on large-scale defense projects, doing business with major contractors on behalf of the United States government. 
I learned to be a good negotiator while honing in on management skills. Ma'am, your time is up. Mr. Wentz. Good evening, Steve Wentz, Republican candidate for commissioner in District 1. Thank you to our nonprofits for organizing this important forum and to all of you who are part of the 11 agencies responsible for the invaluable services you provide to the citizens of Carroll County. As a 37-year volunteer firefighter, past president of CC Visa, and current president of the Pleasant Valley Fire Company, I'm very familiar with the operations of many of these agencies. My wife Kathy was employed by the ARC as their registered nurse, working with the residential clients. My background has allowed me to work firsthand with multiple agencies in countless ways, delivering public safety services, including delivering food to shelters. This allows me to have firsthand knowledge of the passion and the unprecedented services these workers provide for our citizens in need. As a lifelong resident of Carroll County, I'm frustrated by the lack of support by some of our commissioners. Personal agendas are in the forefront and critical issues are not supported. This evening, you will hear why my new direction as a commissioner in District 1 will not allow this to continue. Thank you. Next, please. Hi, I'm Bill Niner and a candidate for County Commissioner in District 2. As a lifetime Carroll Countyan, I grew up on my family's farm and learned the value of hard work early in life. I have volunteered for Congressman Roscoe Bartlett, Senator Haynes, Governor Bob Ehrlich, the Republican Central Committee, and on presidential campaigns for President Bush, John McCain, and Mitt Romney. The citizen's accessibility to me is very important to me as your county commissioner. I look forward to working on the issues of lower taxes, Second Amendment gun rights, small business solutions, helping our family farms, and on educational issues. As your county commissioner, I will work hard representing you and making sure your voice is heard. I will work to ensure that Carroll County values and views are preserved. Thank you. Next. Hello, I'm Richard Weaver, the teacher approved and FOP endorsed candidate for District 2. I'm a farmer and former educator for 38 years in Carroll County school system. I was an agriculture teacher, special education teacher, a career coordinator, and spent a year and a half in administration. Throughout much of that time, I was an FFA advisor and always believed in the FFA creed. The fourth pra uh, paragraph is extremely fitting tonight. I believe in less dependence on begging, more power in bargaining, and the life of Ben abundant and enough honest wealth uh, to help make it so for others as well as myself. Less need for charity and more of it when needed. And being happy with myself and playing square with those who, whose happiness depends upon me. This one paragraph sums up uh, how I approach nonprofits. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name is Dennis Frazier. I'm a Republican. I'm seeking election as County Commissioner in District 3 of Carroll County. My wife, Debbie, and I have two children, Christopher and Sarah. For the past 35 years, I've been a teacher and a wrestling coach. Currently, I serve as a councilman for the City of Westminster. One of the main reasons I'm running for County Commissioner is to improve the quality of life for the people who live in Carroll County. Local government affects all of us every day. It affects us in the form of schools, libraries, roads, water and sewer, parks and recs, and also affects us as, as, for, as well as for our support for our needy citizens by working with the nonprofits. I fully support the work that's done by the nonprofits in Carroll County. Thank you. Hello, I'm Matthew Patrick Holbert. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm, I am an author and philosopher, and uh, I'm running for commissioner in, in District 3 in Westminster. Um, some, of my, some of my titles include Steps to Creating a Brighter Future and a World Citizenship Constitution that is anti-New World Order and Agenda 21, as well as the uh, UN and DC scum, <laughs> um, as well as the Federal Reserve and the Bank of London too, all of it. Uh, we all know that government lobbyists, bankers, and politicians can be corrupt and unscrupulous at best, and uh, criminal psychopaths at worst. <laughs> this is why it must be the least fortunate in money and the most fortunate in honesty, principles, and simplicity to guide us into the future. If knowledge is power, my power is good, but my vision is great. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank all of you involved for this opportunity to speak to you this evening and to discuss the nonprofits in our community and the concerns that you have after the trend of these past three years. I am Ken Mercer, a Republican candidate for County Commissioner in District 3. I consider myself a lifelong member of Carroll County, even though I moved here from Baltimore County when I was in middle school. I went to West Middle and then I graduated out of Westminster High School. Excuse me. 
excuse me. <laughs> um, I was in middle school, and considering I'll be 50 this year, I, I, I spent four-fifths of my life in this county. After I, um, I am a husband, a father, a business owner, and a volunteer for many organizations throughout my life. I point out that I am a volunteer because very few people step up to the plate when called upon to do so. It is volunteers that make things happen and fill in the gaps when an organization cannot do all it can. And to some extent, that is what your organizations do as well. Government cannot do what you do, or at least not as efficient. So I understand your role and need for you in our community. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave Roush. I'm your commissioner from District 3, and I'm currently serving as the president of the Board of Commissioners. I offer you the experience and knowledge I have gained in a lifetime of leadership in industry and community service to provide common sense solutions to our problems. After college, I worked in management positions for Lehigh Cement for over 38 years. I have served in the Army and earned an MBA from Frostburg. After I retired, I got involved in the community, serving a number of nonprofits, some of those here tonight. With my support, this board designated the sheriff as primary law enforcement agency, saving $2 million a year while crime went down 12%. We refused to implement the rain tax while still addressing our stormwater management needs. We have lowered tax rates in each of the past four years. We have reduced the county's debt. I have led significant improvement in our economic development efforts, and we gained over 2,000 jobs. I offer you a unique set of qualifications to continue to serve you as your county commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Good evening. I'm Maria Warburton, District 3. I just want to give you a brief bio for those who don't know me. Uh, my husband and I are both graduates of West Virginia University. That's where we met. Uh, have both have a degree in forestry. From there, we both branched out after that, though, and I got a degree in the mid-90s in public policy from University of Maryland. Um, we have two children, both currently in college. The older one, as far as we know, is set to graduate in about two weeks. Um, so, I uh, haven't heard otherwise. Uh, as I say, we, uh, we bought property here in 1986, uh, moved here in 89. Um, we've been involved in the community in a myriad of ways from I've been a soccer coach, a basketball coach, very involved with Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts when our boys were going through that as committee chair in the Cub Scouts. Um, currently, I volunteer with the Cold Weather Shelter. Our congregation does work with, um, with uh, Shepherd Staff and Carol Food Sunday. So certainly, I believe that there's a lot of nonprofits here that all do valuable work. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Barbara Biller, running for Commissioner in District 4. Thank you for this opportunity and, more importantly, the chance to publicly thank the Carroll County Network of Human Service Organizations that provide needed, basic, safety net services to the at-risk residents of our community. I have first-hand knowledge of several of these organizations having served from 2005 to 2007 on the Board of the Ark of Carroll County and from 1997 to 2004 as the Shepherd Staff Soup Kitchen Coordinator from Westminster Church of the Nazarene, one of eight churches that collects donations, cooks and serves a hot lunch every Friday at the Westminster United Methodist Church. Recent financial pressures have never been greater for many due to unemployment, underemployment, and increasing costs of living. We're fortunate in Carroll that service organizations such as, H such as HSP effectively leverage funds received by as much as $12 worth of grants and state funds for every dollar of county funds. I have a positive vision for Carroll County and I look forward to working together for the good of our community as a member of the Board of Commissioners. Yesterday, <laughs> time's up. <laughs> good evening. My opponents talk about better, more effective government. Better at what? Regulating us? I believe the solution is less government. Our citizens are fed up with officials that talk conservative but spend like liberals. Government's job is to defend your unalienable rights of life, liberty, and property. Annapolis attacks our freedoms because we let them. I have proven under fire that I have the conviction to actually defend your freedom. That's why I wrote the Second Amendment Preservation Resolution created Maryland's first education choice fund, and said no to the rain tax. That's why I oppose Common Core and loss of parental control in education. I cut taxes and debt and extracted us from the incinerator without paying the $3 million fee demanded by a fellow commissioner. That's why I am the only commissioner endorsed by Dan Bongino, Senator Pipkin, and Ellen Sauerbrey, and the Institute on the Constitution. 
My opponent, Ms. Biller, is endorsed by unions and Democrats. I'm Commissioner Richard Rothschild. I've did something refreshing. I've kept my promises and will serve you again if entrusted with your vote on June 24th. Thank you and may God bless you. Thank you, sir. My name is Sean Schaefer. I'm running for District 4 Commissioner. I'm seventh generation and I've lived here in Carroll County all my life. And I'm not going to bore you uh, for the remainder of this evening with more rhetoric. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Doug Howard. I'm County Commissioner for District 5 and I'm seeking re-election for that office. I believe it is the job of Carroll County government to provide for and maintain excellent public safety, infrastructure, and education in a fiscally responsible way. This has been my sole focus since taking office in 2010 and will remain my focus if re-elected. I'm the father of six, a business owner. I've helped other people start their businesses. I've run a nonprofit. I've served on nonprofit boards and worked with many of the nonprofits here tonight. A very high respect for nonprofits who provide vital services for our citizens, leverage county dollars, work under continued budget pressure, and face some of the biggest challenges in our county. I believe I've proven that we can be fiscally responsible and not leave our nonprofits behind, and that's what I will continue to advocate for if reelected. Thank you. Thank you all very much, especially for staying within the time limits. Uh, now it's time to begin asking the questions. Remember, you have three minutes to answer each question, and also remember to state your name and the district uh, you, from which you are running or for which you are running before you answer. Dr. Smith. To you, Jackie, and then we'll just go down the road. Private sector nonprofit organizations that provide critical human services to Carroll County residents have seen their local government financial support either remain the same or actually decrease since 2007. In addition, the county's five-year plan of our local government calls for an annual 3% reduction of existing support over the next five years. Do you agree with this approach? And if not, what will you do to change it? I'm Jackie Jones. I'm Jackie Jones from District 1. No, I do not believe in reducing it. There are many people since the recession in 2007 that have lost their jobs or their companies went out of business. And there's several other reasons why they don't have jobs today. And jobs aren't plentiful. And there's many reasons for that. The new electronics, technology, and so cetera. Um, it's terrible to be poor. And when you're a parent and you're poor, and you know that you have children up in that bed that, is, that are waiting for a meal, or waiting to go to school, or waiting to go to a movie, and you don't have the money to let them go to the movie. They're not meeting with the outside world. I believe, and I care for all the people in Carroll County, even though I represent District 1, or I will represent District 1. It is necessary that we help people who are in need. I don't care whether it's physical or whether it's mental. There are 11 organization, nonprofit organizations. They only get $240,000 a year. That can't be done. That's, that gives money to these people who don't have. They can't make a living on this. They can't even buy, they pay rent. They may be able to get some food. Stop and think about the numbers. 11 organizations, $240,000, and 26,000 Families, is it? 26,000 people? I'm not sure of that. But nevertheless, you cannot live and you cannot do and cannot help. You've got to help the people in your county. It's our responsibility and there's got to be money there. I don't care if we do have to give up, we could get another tax of 0.01 and not reduce it by 0.03. Thank you. Stephen Wance from District 1, and I agree with uh, Mrs. Jones. I do not agree with the approach. Um, and I think in order to change this, we must address uh, what Carol is currently calling their five-year plan. Keep in mind that planning is, the, is the, the key to creating a positive future in Carol. And through the um, continuing efforts of determining and planning for the future, for example, Carroll Hospital's Vision 2020 that they've been working on 
uh, the Carroll 2030 Task Force that I happen to be a part of, representing public safety, and the various other entities that have master plans. Uh, I think it's, it's very important, and as they have been showing in their work, revisiting these, the future is, is very important. I think the ideas that they have formulated as a result of what they have done is an increase, and also with the increasing, the increasing positive signs uh, that our economy seems to be showing, uh, we could easily accomplish funding our nonprofits. In addition, I would like to see a group of nonprofit leaders and related professionals put together to work on ways that all of our nonprofits can become more efficient. This group could work to find new concepts, innovative ways to allow our agencies to become more cost effective when providing the critical needs and assure growth does not outpace the funding. As our population increases and ages and changes, we must continue to work together by demonstrating effective future planning. I would also encourage updated sharing of information with the commissioners on a more frequent basis rather than just annually at budget presentations. Commissioner open sessions are perfect venues for progress reports by our nonprofits throughout the year. Again, the bottom line on providing effective funding is assuring that information is shared with everyone in Carroll on the effective manner in which our nonprofits are operating. Without them, critical needs such as disabilities, sexual abuse, addiction, poverty, etc., increases the funding needs in other areas, such as our law enforcement and our public safety folks. So I do not agree with that approach, and uh, these are some of the things that I will do to change it. Bill Heiner, District 2. As I've stated throughout my campaign, I want to make sure that there's a true balanced budget for the Carroll County government. Based on the budget, we need to see what the appropriate amount of money is needed to help financially support the 11 nonprofits here in Carroll County. What we, need to do, what we need to do is look at the needed support on an annual basis. That gives it a more realistic approach. No one can predict accurately what the needs are going to be in five years, just like no one can predict if it's going to rain in five years from the day. The needs of the community can change constantly depending on the factors like the economy, that disasters, or whatever else may happen in our community that we're not able to predict. There needs to be more, or there needs to be appropriate funding so that there is no over or under funding of our nonprofits here in Carroll County. Thank you. Richard Weaver, District 2. <clears throat> the services provided by the nonprofits reflect our community. I would think in times of need, a county like Carroll County should be able to at least provide a standard level of financial support. If we get people assisted and return to product as productive citizens, the need for services would decrease and allow the others to receive services. The creations of jobs and job training partnered with our business community, Carroll County and Human Resources, and the county's attorney, attorney's office should improve upon existing employment uh, policies and procedures. This over a period of time uh, could pr provide a reduction in the amount of services we need to provide. I believe people need to use the provided services develop a plan to dr transition to self-sufficiency and become productive citizens. Our government is in place to help its citizens not run their lives. Dennis Frazier, District 3. I do not believe in the five-year plan that decreases the amount of money given to the nonprofits. The cost of goods and services that the nonprofits provide goes up and so should the funding from the county. Remember, the county is already saving millions a year by the collaboration they have with the private sector. So increasing the contribution to the nonprofits in reality costs very little and is vitally needed. We're talking about the quality of life for issues for people that the nonprofits serve. And I find it highly hypocritical that a governing body that starts each meeting with a prayer would deny services to the neediest, to the neediest citizens in Carroll County. Thank you. Matthew Holbert, District 3. Um, first, let me just say that uh, if elected, I pledge to give two-thirds of my salary to nonprofits and to the local community, however um, I may, you know, whatever I, however I see as the best. Um, secondly, 
I would just like to uh, address the notion that these people up here are somehow you know, the ones that decide whether or not the things like the nonprofits and the community organizations are uh, upheld, essentially. Um, we don't need these people. We need the people to turn off the television and put their hands into the soil and their eyes into a book and their hearts into their fellow, their fellow beings. I think that that is the most important thing that we can do. Charity, we need charity, we need community and that those are the most important things to focus on in our time. Thank you. Ken Mercer, District 3. Um, the first part of the question, I do not have the numbers for the last seven years, but I do have them for the current budget and the next five going forward, and I'll address that in the later part of the um, question. But is it appropriate what was done? No. Um, the last several years have been tough. The economy has been tough. It's been horrible. I know because I own a business and in the private, in the private sector. And because of that, I understand that, that, that when times are the worst, you do not strip from your revenue like our current commissioners have, thus hurting the needs of the community or in a business sense, hindering your chances for growth. While growing government in special interest areas as they have, duplicate assistance and the like. As for the current budget and the next five years, overall the budget increases in FY14 from eight million one hundred plus thousand dollars to FY19 to eight million five hundred and some thousand dollars. However, the ARC, Change, Family and Children's Services, both of them, Mosaic, HSP, Flying Colors of Success, Rape Crisis, Target, and Youth Services Bureau are all having their funds cut under this Board of Commissioners over the next five years. Why, I do not know. Why they chose to cut those programs and, and increase on others, I do not know and I do not understand it. Now, as for the question, what would I do to change this? I would not extend the one-year election term property tax break that is being put in place under the current proposed budget. This will bring approximately $2 million back into the revenue of the county that can be used in the community for organizations such as our nonprofits that service. In addition, I have a plan to be proactive in our economic development to bring needed revenue to the county from a source other than our homeowners. Thank you. The nonprofits in Carroll County, the 11 sponsors of this forum and the dozens of others serving our citizens do good work and provide support and assistance to people in need of such help. <clears throat> They're an important part of our community. Our citizens have been supportive of all of these organizations for many years. Each year, the county commissioners must establish a balanced budget and adopt it by May 31st for the fiscal year that will begin the following June 1, July 1. This budget is based on the most up-to-date information on revenues and spending plans. It is the practice of Carroll County to also adopt a plan for the five years after the budget year. This allows the commissioners to get an idea of what the longer range implications of the decisions they make in that budget and aids, decision, uh, aids decisions they make in that budget. And aids, I'm sorry, and aids in preventing the uh, structural deficits. The plan is based on forecasts of what might happen. These forecasts are based on the best information available at the time but they are still only best guesses. It is only when the budget for the next fiscal year with all the current and most credible information available is adopted by the commissioners that actual spending is set forth. The budget often varies from the prior plan in its details, even when the overall effects are about the same. Each year, the commissioners make budget decisions based on the current revenue strains, streams and the needs and priorities at that particular time. Look at the budget experience of this year. Even though the prior plan showed a decrease in funding for the 11 sponsoring agencies for fiscal year 15, they made presentations to the commissioners requesting increases over the prior year. After considering all the requests of all the various agencies, the commissioners voted to increase funding to these nonprofits over the prior year. Keep in mind, the plan is only an idea of what might happen in the future in order to keep our total spending from not exceeding our revenues. 
What really counts is what is actually done in the budget for the next fiscal year. And this year, that was increased funding for these 11 nonprofits. Um, as far as having a five year plan, I certainly think that planning for any project, any, any program is a good idea. Um, one problem with having a five year plan is that elections come around every four years. Um, so it kind of helps, in, in my mind, you get more, bent, more funding by having an election every year. Uh, all of a sudden, this year, there's money to find a 1.5% increase. Um, does that ha is it a coincidence that it's an election? I don't know. Um, if you read the press release that came out yesterday by the county, it wasn't even a, just a 1.5% increase. It was a 4% increase. Apparently, what they did was they took the proposed 3% cut, added it to the actual 1%, 1.5% increase, played with the numbers, and came up with a 4%. 4.5% increase. Um, so, you know, statistics, as they say, can, can say anything you want them to say. Um, as far as whether cuts are appropriate, I mean, all the nonprofits are vital functions. Maybe there's ways to see. I know there was a report done, a study done last year, if there could be better use of county facilities, uh, fueling stations, IT, their grant. Uh, uh, personnel. So is there a way to keep the um, functionality the same and maybe barter cash for other services? Um, the other thing is we keep uh, hearing about the 11 uh, nonprofits that the county is funding. Well, it, in my mind, starting with last year, the county is now funding 12 nonprofits um, w because they've added $400,000 to the Community Foundation of Carroll County. And they've given them $400,000 last year and this year to a nonprofit. So now there's 12 nonprofits. There were other agencies in, this, in the county. There's HSP, there's Shepherd Staff that could have helped children with money that's needed for educational expenses, the Educational Opportunity Fund, and now apparently called the Education Choice Fund. So it's kind of disingenuous to propose cutting some nonprofits when you add 400,000 to a second one, in close, I mean in a 12th one. In closing, without counting the 12th one, there's $2,600,000 that goes to the 11 nonprofits. Their total revenue is 32,700,000. So I think they leverage a pretty good sum of change for the amount that they're given by the county. Thank you. Good evening. The question is, do you agree with this approach of reducing the budget 3% over the out years um, to the nonprofits? Let me say first that Carroll County is fortunate that of persons that are below the poverty level that live in Carroll County, it's about 5.5%. In the state of Maryland, it's 9.4%. Doesn't make it any better, but we are somewhat blessed that people living below the poverty level is a low percentage. However, if you're one of the people in that 5.5%, it doesn't matter, because that's where you are. Um, and when we work to balance the budget in the out years by saying we're going to cut nonprofits by 3%, that says we're going to balance our budget on the backs of the people that need it the most. Um, we're in a time right now when we probably the need for our nonprofits, which really are not entitlements, these are safety net services, is probably at the heaviest, at the highest load that it will be. Um, what I didn't get to say was yesterday, uh, there was a 2014 Carroll County Economic su Summit, and some of you know Annabon Basu, famous economist locally here, stated that Carroll's on the move, meaning that we are in recovery from the recession, and that new news needs to get out. Although it's slow, it's steady, and soon we'll begin to feel the impact of the recent economic development some of uh, you have heard of probably companies coming to Carroll County. Well, I will tell you, the hiring sign is out on Route 97, and that's a positive indicator for our local economy that those who have struggled will be, have the opportunity to get back on their feet. <clears throat> now, we also have a great group of folks that are in the local management board and some of the folks that meet monthly to make sure that there's great coordination of services in Carroll, and that is great, but possibly traditional methods may no, no longer work. Um, and we're going to need to look for creative other ways to address these issues. Um, if there's not direct funding in the county budget, then we need to look for other resources. Um, I encourage you, I'm reading a book called More or Less, 
Choosing a Lifestyle of Excessive Generosity by Jeff Schinneberger. And uh, I recommend it to anyone who's interested in making a difference in our world through how you live. It's a simple approach about looking about how you define what's enough in your life because we really are a wealthy and affluent society. So how much is enough and whatever is excess, you give that and fill a need with the excess that you have. I'm looking forward to working to the folk, with the folks in Carroll County who are creative, that look at these problems and work here every day. We're going to come up with solutions for this. I have a positive outlook for our county because of the community we live in, what we've been able to do so far. We're going to continue that. Commissioner Richard Rothschild, first, I want to say that our nonprofits do a very important job for our most vulnerable citizens, and we're all indebted for the hard work that you do. And you don't need to speculate about my position. During my term in office, I have supported level funding for our 11 nonprofits consistently. But remember, there are hundreds of nonprofits in Carroll County, and only 11 receive government funding. But I want to make something else very clear. In the long run, government cannot ensure the success of our nonprofits. It is the private sector, private sector donors, private sector companies, and private sector wealth that will raise the tide that floats all nonprofits to a higher level. A better economy will also return people to financial self-sufficiency, reducing the drain on our nonprofits that are fulfilling economic uh, hardships. This will enable them to focus more of their efforts on citizens that have irreconcilable health problems, disability problems, and safety challenges rather than simply financial challenges. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a story about a king. He was very wise and he was on his deathbed and he was going to die. And he said to his aides, I want to die being the smartest man in the world. So he sent his aides out to get, gather all the data and bring it back to him. A few days later, his aides came back. They had a thousand volumes of books. The king said, I can't read all of those. I'm going to die in a few weeks. So he sent them out again and asked them to condense the information. A week later, his aides came back to him and they said, Your Majesty, we've got great news. We've reduced all the wisdom in the world down to one simple phrase. And the king said, Tell me, quick, tell me, what is it? And they said, Your Majesty, there's no free lunch. And ladies and gentlemen, there's no free lunch in government either. Traditionally, nonprofits have not relied on government funding. These days, many nonprofits receive federal aid, state aid, and local funding. But this is obviously not sustainable given the very bad shape that so many government budgets are in in the federal, state, and local level. Some members of the Board of Commissioners are promising more money to schools, more money to public works, more money to libraries, more money to government employees, and more money to nonprofits. But there's no free lunch. Sooner or later, this formula leads to a dead end. There is no way to give more to everyone without eventually taking more money from the taxpayers. Thank you. Sean Schaefer, District 4. If our five-year plan called for a decrease and then each year on the budget we actually have to give an increase, then we wrote a bad five-year plan. We can't, if our economy is doing poorly and people need more services, then we need to fund those services when the economy is poor. And then yes, we can cut some support when people are doing well and you can collect funding from other sources. But we can't keep writing five-year plans that, call, that try to make predictions into a, for an economy that we don't know nothing about and then reverse our decisions when those budgets come time for planning. We can uh, increase uh, our revenue and provide you for more services. The money does have to come from somewhere, yes. But we can increase revenue without increasing taxes. I would like to increase the minimum wage. That way, when we do collect taxes, we can collect from a bigger hole, and then there will be more revenue for our programs. And there will be uh, people will have more money, so then that they, we, they would not have to need those programs. And thank you. <clears throat> Doug Howard, uh, candidate for District 5. Uh, Ronald Reagan, in a speech to uh, the uh, Joint Session of Congress in 1981, said, those who, through no fault of their own, must depend on the rest of us, the poverty-stricken, the disabled, the elderly, all those with a true need, can rest assured that the social safety net of programs they depend on are exempt from any cuts. And he was a pretty conservative guy, and I think we need to take that to heart. Having said that, I will tell you, I was the author of the 3% reduction plan, and that surprised some people in Carroll County, and let me tell you why and why it was necessary at the time. The reason it was necessary at the time, despite the story about Kings and some other fiction tonight, is that we had a majority, or at least close to a majority, of our board that did not want to fund nonprofits. That was a reality. 
And so in going forward, the real concern that I had, and I shared this with many of the folks in the nonprofit community, was if we don't find a way to trim everybody a little, we're going to be sitting here talking about which ones to eliminate. And we actually had an exercise one time where we went through with our budget director who could be eliminated. And when you started looking at the hole that would be left in our community by any one of those organizations being taken out completely, that scared me. So we said they need to be prepared for a 3% cut, a modest cut, so that we can make sure we maintain everybody. But if we do that, I will commit a couple of things to you. I will form a nonprofit group to look for best practices and ways to save money amongst our county. And I did that. I did that individually. Tammy Black, Cindy Parr, Lynn Davis helped me uh, with that project. Uh, and we were able to look at fleet and purchasing and ways to save money. And some agencies saved more than the funding they lost. I also said, if you participate in this program, I will come back and advocate. And unfortunately, yes, sometimes you got to plan, and then you come back and hope you can do more. Taking money out of the surplus to get us back to where we needed to be got us to flat funding last year. I proposed, along with Commissioner Shoemaker, being up 3% this year. That didn't fly. Commissioner Frazier, Commissioner Rothschild came back and said, no, we should be at 0%. Fortunately, the board came in with three people that said we should be at 1.5%. Before this budget's over, I think we should be able to find our way to 3%. We're talking about $75,000 for agencies that are scrutinized to the nth degree, as opposed to a program that we created for $400,000 where we haven't seen one statistic of performance yet. So having said that, we go forward and say, you know what, if you look at those out years, 16 and 17 are a problem, and I don't think we can adjust those until we see what the surpluses are going to be, but 18, 19, and 20, we can build increases in. I've run the statistics on it. It's about $400,000 in the out year with year-over-year -year increases, maybe a little more, $500,000, and that could be accomplished if we're committed to do it, and that's what we need as an advocate, to be committed to do it, and I think I'm that person. Thank you all for your responses. Now it's time for the second question. Once again, you have three minutes to answer. Don't forget to mention your name and the district for which you are running, and we're going to start with Mr. Howard at the other end and work this way. In Carroll County, 11 nonprofit human service organizations help over 24,000 citizens each year deal with problems such as poverty, disability, and other challenges. In many other Maryland counties, these needs are met by local government agencies at public expense. Do you support the collaborative and unique Carroll County approach that combines both public and private sector financial support for these vital services? Yeah, uh, yes, I do. Um, I, I believe that if you look at what we strive for in a conservative government, it is to let the private sector do as much of the work as can be done. I believe in small business. I believe in free enterprise. These 11 nonprofits are private nonprofits. They are private enterprise at work to solve needs that are in the community. Now, many of these needs we would be required by law to deal with in some way, and that's why they appear in other counties' uh, government structures. If we chose not to deal with them at all, they would show up in other ways. They would show up in problems in our school system, they would show up in problems in our crime rate, in drug statistics, in mortality rates. There's a whole host of ways that this would show up in our community, and those costs, you wouldn't be able to see them in one line item, but they would be there. The fact is also, just from a humane and humanity standpoint, there are things that we should be working on because these are the most vulnerable people in our population. And so the way you do it is you go out to these folks that have their own budgets, and I had one when I was executive director of Carroll Area Transit System. We had to make budget. If we didn't get enough from the county, we looked for ways to streamline. If that didn't work, we looked for ways to fundraise. We took every dollar that we could get and tried to leverage that. Now, we support those efforts by being able to help them find grants, uh, to support them philosophically when they need support letters and those kinds of things. There's also a huge... Uh, cooperative effort amongst Carroll County. Carroll County is a great place to govern because really all you have to do is get the right people in the room and they solve problems that you can't even believe. Other, other jurisdictions are so jealous of Carroll County, it's not even funny in this regard. And so the fact is you get the right people in the room and they say, you know what, and I did this when I was at CATS. We ran into a funding issue where we couldn't really uh, keep service on the road. And we met with Don Rao at the ARC and Rick Glazier at Change and said, you know, what are your transportation needs? Is there a way that we can do for you, save you some money, generate some revenue for us, and have everybody win? Now, there were all kinds of obstacles, you know, what's it going to mean legally, and how are we going to handle the insurance, and we need attendance on the buses, and you know what? If you stay in the room long enough, 
and you get creative enough, you figure out a way to do it. And today, that's a very, very successful program. So the simple fact is, I don't think it's just a good way to get this done for Carroll County. I believe it's the only way to get it done for Carroll County. And when you realize what that means in terms of taking that tax dollar and leveraging it, it is a great deal for you, the citizens. So I'm very proud of the work that's been done, the role I've played in it, some of the other successful leaders in the uh, nonprofit community. And I believe that you will actually see us do much, much more over the next five years uh, because of that kind of approach. So I support it 100%. If Sean Schaefer for District 4. If Carroll County has a unique, unique situation where we use a mixture of private and public funding for our nonprofits and no other Maryland County does that, I see no reason why we shouldn't continue to support that unique situation. And if it's a plan that works, then I don't see why we should duplicate anybody else's when what we're doing works and we're, we've got a system in place that nobody else uses. So maybe it should be, the question should be the other way around. Shouldn't Maryland count, other Maryland counties do what we do? Thank you. Commissioner Richard Rothschild, first and foremost, I hope our citizens understand that having private organizations to meet the needs of our less fortunate citizens is truly a blessing. And uh, we owe a great deal of uh, gratitude to our folks that are running these organizations like Cindy and Lynn and Don, and I thank all of you for your hard work. You fulfill a valuable need in the community. You know, if not for our nonprofits, a much bigger burden would be placed directly on taxpayers. We have, but we do have organizations like the Marriage Resource Center, Agora, Shepherd Staff, the Carroll Community Foundation, and many others that provide valuable community services at no cost to the taxpayers, and I want you to be aware of that. Now, I always support private entities that provide valuable services to our society. Private enterprises always make more effective use of limited resources than government. Now, I want to take a moment and talk about the spiritual component of this, because I believe most common sense Carroll County citizens will agree that government taking money from one taxpayer and giving it to another taxpayer is neither generosity nor charity. Generosity occurs when an individual gives his own money or resources for the benefit of a fellow human being. That's the true definition of charity, and that's what it says in the Bible. I'm to take the money out of my bank account, not redistribute yours. That's the Christ-like behavior. And there's nothing charitable about elected officials that transfer taxpayers' money from one citizen to another. Too often, promises of increased spending are used by candidates during election years to buy popularity with special interests. I will not go there. So I want to make something clear about my own philosophy. I believe each of us has a responsibility to give of ourselves and our resources where we are able. Why? Because when government takes over this role, it robs us of our resources. It robs us of the spiritual responsibility and benefits that we have to do these things ourselves for our fellow man. And when each of us takes on this responsibility personally, it makes us better individuals and it makes us a stronger society. So tonight, I want to encourage everyone to volunteer their time and resources to these fine organizations. They are wonderful organizations, ladies and gentlemen, and I support all of them wholeheartedly. And, I, and, and we need to support the less fortunate people that they support, and they also, our people need to volunteer with their churches, their synagogues, these nonprofits. They need to give more money to these organizations because these organizations, especially our churches and synagogues, are the original source of charity and good works in America. Thank you. We've heard once or twice, Carroll County is home to 518 nonprofits that employ 5,344 people in our community. That's about 10% of Carroll's workforce. But don't be mistaken, people create nonprofits for many reasons, and all of them are not looking for government handouts. They are created to um, encourage scholarships and, and for many reasons. Um, so let's look at the $2.6 million of county funds that are allocated to the 11 local nonprofits. And again, we can't say how well they leverage that money. Uh, they report that they get the value of $35 million worth of services. That's about 13 and a half times their county contribution, what the county gives. They are able to leverage that 13 and a half times. I consider that to be an investment. Anyone that can make that much, if I give you a dollar, you're going to make 1350 out of it, I think is pretty efficient. And of that $35 million, it's reported that it serves 25,000 people. That's about $1,400 for each person. That's not very much that, that they're actually. So that's where I, I emphasize these are safety net services. They're not handouts. 
Um, when I first run, filed to run for county commissioner, I reached out to Cindy Parr to become form more familiar with the HSP program. She shared with me how the local professionals and volunteers work together, and it's very impressive. There's a Carroll County Circle of Caring Homelessness Board, there's a local management board, and there's a community services council. Homelessness is still an issue in our community, as is drug addiction. So with the limited dollars that we have the government might be able to give, I think we need to just make sure that we're focusing on the real issues that are relevant in our community and making sure that we're addressing those in a real relevant way. And I'm very much of a roll up the sleeves, let's figure out what we can do, what's the one action that we can take to end some of these problems. Um, I'm also for looking every year at can we reallocate funds. Um, one of the questions was consistent funding. I'm not always in support of consistent funding because that doesn't give you the ability to add, change, reduce, eliminate. I would hope one day we would solve some of the issues in our community through hard work and we might want to look at now what are the issues in society, in our community. We hear now that um, autism is on the rise or maybe the diagnosis of folks with the autism spectrum disorder is on the rise. We may have to look at that as a new um, fund or donation to that. But, but let's first be informed and let's look at how that, to what effect is that affecting our community and make wise decisions through focus. And I look at this funding as lighting a match. Government funds should always be used sparingly to get projects started, but then they should take off on their own. And if they're truly filling a need, let's have a partnership of these private and um, public and nonprofit organizations that can help resolve that issue. But the government funds should be a little spark that get it started and then let that flame build. Um, hi, I'm Maria Warburton, um, District 3. Um, so my understanding of the question was um, whether or not we thought the setup that Carol has is a good idea. Where apparently the, the, a lot of the well, a lot of the services that in other counties are provided by the local government here in Carroll are provided by nonprofits. And to be honest with you, I didn't really know that other counties did it did it differently till I started looking into it. And I thought, well. I don't know which way I support better. I'm not really sure. So I thought, well, I should ask the professionals, you know, the people that are involved. And so I did. I, I've gone out and I've talked to, to folks that are in different groups. And it turns out that it seems most do, most of the nonprofits actually do support the way it's set up. They believe that services can be administered more efficiently. Needs can, when needs change, uh, the nonprofits can adapt more quickly. To, to the needs of the, of the community than if it's a government agency and there's more red tape and, and that sort of thing. Um, I also heard that there's a great uh, relationship though with the county community services uh, department. There's something called the local management board that apparently does a great job with as a liaison between the two groups. So I would say if it's working the way it is and that's what the nonprofits like and it's saving the county money, um, there's a lot of, I guess, money that they can leverage that they can get from other grants that only are given to nonprofits. Um, my understanding is there may be some cases where it would be better to have it as a county agency. I, I understand there's things like senior ride that there's state money, but it can only go to a county. It can't go to a nonprofit. And there is uh, some concern in the county where if you have a doctor's appointment outside of the county, CATS does not go outside the county. And I know there's fear that we don't want, you know, mass transit here, but there does seem to be maybe some services, some money out there, state money, other money. We pay state taxes, so why not ask for the state money? You know, is there some areas, needs that are not being met that would be better served by the county? But in general, the way it's done now seems to be working. It's what the nonprofits prefer, and so I would say keep it the way, the way it is. The nonprofits in Carroll County, the 11 sponsors of this forum and the hundreds of others serving our citizens, do good work and provide support and assistance to people in need of such help. They're an important part of our community. Our citizens have been supportive of these organizations for many years. They have also been supportive of the services provided being a part of and directed by private sector philanthropic organizations. Our citizens seem to feel that these human services should not become part 
of the lethargic bureaucratic processes that are sometimes a part of government. I agree with this sentiment. The proper role of government is to provide facilities and services that our citizens cannot provide for themselves through private sector activities. Whenever the private sector can provide what is needed, that is the best place for such organizations to be working from. In addition, we have been working collaboratively, collaboratively with the nonprofit community to try to bring the combined purchasing power of county government and these agencies to bear so that they can reduce the costs of some of their purchases. This is a system that is working and should continue. Ken Mercer, District 3. Do I support the current approach? Yes, I do. And I'd like to back up a little bit from my opening from when I stammered some, tell you a little bit about me. Um, after high school, I attended university. From there, I joined the US Army. When I was finished in the service, I came back home and I wanted to own my own business. I worked for a few different um, small business people and I watched them. I watched what they did was correct and I watched what they did was wrong. Two of the individuals I worked for supported the community. The last person I worked for did nothing for the community. And I knew that when I would be a business owner, I would support the community that supported me. As a business owner, I donate to nonprofits, many of them. I don't put my, paper, my, my picture in the paper when I give a check, but I support nonprofits because I believe in it. Now, I believe also that your agencies provide a valuable service to our community in serving those that are in need the most. As commissioner, I would continue the collaborative approach combination of both public and private support. Um, as for the uh, second part of the question, uh, currently uh, receiving $2.6 million and your total budget uh, is at $35 million. Um, again, I think it's appropriate. I do support it. But um, that shows that with that, that the public sector, that, that excuse me, that in addition, you demonstrate that with a combined total of $35 million per year budget and only $2.6 million coming from the public sector, that you are capitalizing on matching funds, fundraisers, and private sector donations. You are doing your part. In the district uh, commissioner's forum, one thing I mentioned was um, the matching funds. And that I mentioned, I know many of you are receiving matching funds because of what we give you. And I mentioned that there may be some, because I know many of you, many of you know me, um, and I, but I don't know all of you. And some of the smaller organizations, one thing I mentioned was if you are not receiving matching funds, we should make sure we hook you up with the larger organizations that are and help you in that way. But if you're already doing it, then fine. Uh, I do thank you for your service that you do provide in the community, and I'll continue to support you both publicly or excuse me, both privately as I do as a business owner, and I would do that as a Royal Commissioner as well. Matthew Holbert, District 3. Um, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> I mean, that's just common sense. Um, we don't need more government bureaucracy. Uh, what we need is, if the nonprofits are capable of taking up that responsibility, then that, that should be, you know, what, what happens. Um, and the government is, if the government is paying into it, um, at least then it's not paying into something like golden toilets or you know something of the like. You know, so um, I think as long as our government is you know funding the nonprofits, that in itself is kind of a good a good thing. And if it works, that's 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 even better. Um, a quote from Thomas Jefferson. Was our government to prescribe to us our medicine and diet, our bodies would be in such keeping as our souls are today. Um, <laughs> uh, that, I think, is an important uh, thing as well to, uh, to kind of acknowledge that uh, we don't need more government in our lives. Um, uh, if you can tell, I'm, uh, I'm uh, I guess, a small government type. Uh, <laughs> um, so... Um, to give a little background about myself also, um, I have worked in Yellowstone National Park for three seasons. It was uh, two summers and a winter in that area. And so one of my biggest proponent ideas, I think, is to help the nonprofits or certain community organizations in agricultural and community organi organizing because I think that that's fundamentally important for our self-sufficiency. And um, 
I, I also have hitchhiked the United States, um, which is something that you get a sense of, oh, I'm afraid of people. Uh, but in actuality, people are not as scary as you may think. Uh, I'm, <laughs> um, there actually are good people in this world. And what I think the, fu the fundamental thing that the nonprofits represent is the choice between love and fear. In the eyes of fear, there is the idea of putting locks on your doors and buying guns and holding yourself hostage in your own home, essentially. And in the eyes of love, it, the eyes of love embrace other people and the idea of uh, community and uh, just love thy neighbor as thyself. So um, I choose the nonprofits and I choose the path of love. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Dennis Frazier, District 3. I am in agreement with the way the nonprofits are funded in Carroll County. The collaborative effort between the county and the private sector saves the county millions of dollars a year and has proven to work very well. However, the county has to keep up its end of the deal. We cannot cut county money and expect the private sector to pick up the difference, especially in a tough, eco a tough economy when nonprofit services are in the greatest need. The basic life skills program that helps people find and keep jobs is an example of a program in great need with a down economy. This service helps turn unemployed people back into productive taxpaying citizens again. Spending money on programs like this and programs like Parents as Teachers, which helps parents with parenting skills, will actually save Carroll County money in the long run. <clears throat> These programs and others like them are the reasons I support funding for the nonprofits. Thank you. Richard Weaver, uh, District 2. I like the unique uh, approach to funding Carroll County uses. The combination of public and private sector financial support allows for sustainability, especially if one sector can't fund its in a full amount. This is a great model. It is also my understanding that some of the support isn't financial. Uh, much some, in this county, some of the uh, uh, support comes in the form of operating space with a long-term lease. Some of the nonprofits utilize the county's fleet maintenance and repair services in order to lower the cost for uh, parts, labor, etc. These type of services, along with assistance from purchasing, risk management, technology services, county attorney, the grants office, the human resources, provides a unique partnership uh, between these agencies and the county. Working together in the future, I hope to alleviate some of the uh, present frustrations that exist. Thank you. Bill Niner, District 2. And yes, I support both the public and private financial support for services provided to our nonprofits. Nonprofit organizations provide important services to many of our people in our community. A lot of these organizations provide services that many people could not afford otherwise. A prime example would be Access Carroll. Access Carroll provides medical services to people in our community who otherwise are not able to afford health care. They provide free health care to uninsured, low-income residents who meet certain qualifications. As a member of the American Legion and the Kiwanis Club of Westminster, I've gotten to see firsthand how both the public and private funds fund these nonprofits. Uh, having support or having financial support from the private sector helps reduce costs to taxpayers where all the funding is not coming just from the Carroll County government but expenses for the nonprofits are shared by both the private and the public funds. Finally getting down to this end of the table. Uh, Stephen Wance from District 1, and if you've forgotten the question, uh, do you support the collaborative and unique Carroll County approach that combines both public and private sector financial support for these vital services? Uh, yes, absolutely, I, uh, I support it 100%. And uh, I'd like to point out too, and I think it's already been pointed out several times, that our, our, our nonprofits are private agencies. Uh, they, they, are, they are contractual relationships, if you will, uh, providing help for the county's most vulnerable citizens. And having the unique opportunity to work in a, in a neighboring jurisdiction and see how they work down there, I can assure you that what we do here in Carroll is very unique. And I'll, I'll, I'll put a personal touch on the answer to this question. Uh, I've also had the, the unique opportunity to be um, a, 
an emergency service provider for many of you in this room for the last 37 years and the 14 volunteer fire companies in this county pretty much operate on the same level of activity as what most of you that are involved in our not profits uh, operate on. We are, are private entities that take care of a, a, an extremely valuable resource here for the county and therefore save the county taxpayers an incredible amount of money. So uh, the, t the two are directly related uh, when, you, when you talk about the, the major 11 nonprofits and, and all of the others that are, that, are, um, that are certainly instrumental in providing the needs for our citizens. Uh, I also want to point out that I, I find it very frustrating that, that many of these nonprofits and, and the fire companies alike um, certainly become affected by the constant need to justify their valuable, invaluable services to our, our county government on an annual basis. And, and I find that uh, uh, quite frustrating as, as we move along. But the bottom line is this, folks. Uh, without these agencies, the county would be responsible in many cases by law to provide these services and, and there is no doubt that we would have to provide that on a government level at a much higher cost. Jackie Jones, District 1, Democrat. I, you've heard it all down here. I, I'm just going to say no free lunch. I don't know, I've had some free lunches. And I will say this, it, because uh, we had to have it. Now, the other thing is, I like the idea of the government and the nonprofits working together. I think in, in the uh, fundraisers and so forth, that, that causes a lot of camaraderie and so forth in, within the community. But I, I think if the, the commissioners had maintained what they were doing this year for the nonprofits, that would have been acceptable to me. But to reduce it by 300%, no, no. Some of you guys have never been out to the grocery store this year or bought your own clothes or something because everything is going up, 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 up. And how can we reduce when everything's going up? I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Someone's shaking their head. I, I don't know whether you agree with me or the disagree, but I'd like to know what it, it means because I don't understand that. I've been through this world through a lot, and I, I just don't. But my passion really is people, especially children, and children who are disadvantaged, regardless of how it is, and elderly who are disadvantaged and sick. So whatever it is to help them, as a citizen of America, I feel it's our responsibility to do it. Thank you once again for your responses. Um, that's the last question we intend to ask. Uh, what we'd like to do now is to give each of you an opportunity to uh, wrap up and to summarize your respective positions. Now, we each have 60 seconds, and we'll start once again with Ms. Jones. Thanks. Three not bad. Important thing that I've learned through my years of experience is that elected officials must work together to achieve success. I promise to work with other commissioners, our school board, nonprofits, county fire departments, and state elected officials to reach compromise for better of our county and our citizens. A few may view this as a sign of weakness, but I assure you it is a great strength when you're an elected representative, can work together to reach common goals. Our county is at a crossroads, and we need leadership by the people I know. I can provide that leadership. So I ask you simply to just join Jackie. Remember me on November 4th. Again, thank you to all of you, to, to everyone who came out this evening in this uh, fantastic spring weather that we are experiencing. Uh, you know, the people who work for these agencies should be applauded for providing the needed critical services, securing matching funds through grants and saving taxpayer dollars in the long run. They bring federal and state funds into the local economy, providing a healthier and safer county. Some commissioners have voted to cut their funding 
Last week's session did restore some funding, but the incumbents in District 1 and 4 voted against this funding. I find this unconscionable. I'm frustrated by the lack of common sense focused leadership, especially in District 1. Our job is to, is to protect the needs of citizens. We must assist those in need in our community. These agencies and their services are not luxuries, they are a necessity. Effective leadership is essential. Let's take care on a new direction, preparing for the future to keep it a great place to live, work, and play. I'm Steve Wance. I'm your lone representative on the Republican side from District 1 this evening, and I ask for your support on June the 24th. Bill Niner, District 2. I'm the only candidate for District 2 that has the heart, work ethic, energy, and the desire to serve the community as your county commissioner. I have been endorsed by Senator Larry Haynes and Delegate Tanya Shewell, who know I'm the most qualified person for county commissioner and that have the energy and the skills to lead our community. Just like Niner Road, I will be a link. Niner Road links Deer Park Road, which is a county road, to a state highway, Route 32. I will ensure that your voice is heard, not just in the county government, but also down in Annapolis when we have issues that we have to go to our state legislators. I will work to make sure everybody's voice is heard. For more information for Niner for Commissioner, you can visit my website at ninerforyou.com. And since accessibility is an important issue for me, you can always contact me on my personal cell phone at 443-536-1408. That'll be on my official letterhead and business cards when I'm county commissioner because it really sucks when you elect somebody and you can't get a hold of them. Uh, finally, I would like to ask you for your vote on Election Day. So let's get on track with Bill Niner for County Commissioner. Thank you. Richard Weaver, candidate uh, from District 2. I've seen the effect that the non, uh, nonprofit agencies have on members of the community. Being an educator for 38 years, I've worked with many of these uh, agencies. And as a career coordinator, I had interns who wished to go into social work because of what they've been through and the success and result of their services that they had received. I believe in, getting back to my creed, I believe in less need for charity, but more of it when needed. I believe government is in place to help all of its constituents, and it has to be that way. Remember, the difference between an open palm and a helping hand is a twist of the wrist. Dennis Frazier, District 3. I'm going to try to combine two things here. Change is a nonprofit organization that helps people with disabilities acquire skills, job skills, and jobs. This is vital for the, for the people that they work with. The clients of change work for a paycheck. This also makes them less dependent on taxpayer money, and the employment makes them part of the tax base. So there is no free lunch. There is, however, payback from the clients of the nonprofits. In conclusion, I want to remind everyone how important this election is not just for nonprofits, which have not received any additional funding since 2007, but for everyone in Carroll County. Ask yourself, can the county survive another four years with the same policies? Please come out and vote on June 24th in the primary election. Tell the current Board of Commissioners we've had enough. And when you cast your vote, please cast it for Dennis Frazier, District 3 Commissioner. Thank you. Matthew Holbert, District 3. Uh, thank you to the ARC and those attending. Um, we are creating the future today. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, the future we are creating can be a heaven or a hell, depending upon the choices we make and the perspectives that we take. The actions of the American people against the best wishes of the founding fathers has uh, proven the idiom that those unfamiliar with history are doomed to repeat it. It is our duty, our right as sentient beings, to give a just scrutiny to the forms to which we are accustomed, our government to which we are oligarchically beholden, our culture to which we are ceaselessly conditioned, and our way of living, or reason for living, which is usually programmed into us by both government and culture. Today, more than ever, we need people that are not programmed, that are not beholden, that are capable of scrutiny, and that have vision, people of principle. I believe I'm one of those people. Thank you. Again, I would like to thank you for taking the time to hold this forum and to become more familiar with my candidacy and the other candidates before you. As I mentioned, many of you have come to know me before this forum. I hope that I have given you the opportunity to know me better. For those of you that do not know me, I hope that you will continue to research my candidacy. My webpage is kennethmercer.com 
and I am on Facebook under Kenneth J. Mercer. Please, I do have material available as well with my contact information, and I welcome your contact. Our county is at a crossroads, and the decision that you make on June 24th will determine what direction we take. I am asking for your vote on June 24th to lead and to serve our county to be the great place that we know it to be. Vote Mercer, June 24th. Thank you very much. Dave Rausch, Commissioner, District 3. As the state continues to deal with its fiscal mismanagement by for forcing costs onto already lean county budgets, there is only one way to raise funds and prevent property taxes from becoming an intolerable burden to Carroll County homeowners. We must increase our economic tax base by increasing economic development. Carroll County needs more business to relieve the pressure on property taxes and provide jobs for our citizens. We need to grow the businesses we have and bring new ones in. Carroll County faces fiscal problems. Effectiveness must be increased, efficiencies found, and costs cut. My experience gives me a unique background for handling this sort of crisis and making the necessary decisions. We've made substantial investment in our preparing our children and grandchildren to be productive citizens. I believe we also need to be sure that they can get a job and make a home right here in Carroll County. I bring to you the experience of a lifetime of leadership in business and community service to create common sense solutions. I need your help and your vote on June 24th. Thank you. Maria Warburton, District 3. Um, I had expected, I guess, four questions, but everybody didn't want to be here till 9.30, so I understand that. But I think, uh, briefly, I think most people can agree wherever the funding comes from, that nonprofits save us money. Um, whether it's, you know, drug treatment for a teenager that keeps them out of uh, jail and, and, you know, the law enforcement side of things to the rape crisis center, which keeps, uh, you know, to counsel the youth, you know, people that have uh, encountered rape and other sexual uh, uh, attacks. Um, but so I think we can agree that they do save us money. As far as uh, voting for me in the primary, most people sitting here probably can't do that. You either live in a different district or you're of a different party affiliation. Um, but I urge everyone to get out and vote June 24th or as part of early voting, which is, I believe, the 12th to the 19th of June, if you're on vacation later. There's going to be a lot of important elections decided in the primary, and everybody here is probably planning to vote. Urge your parents, your children to vote, anyone else you know. Thank you. Well, thank you again for the opportunity to speak. I'm Barbara Bill, a Republican candidate for District 4. And I'm happy to be able to share my approach to you on what I think, how the local government fits with the local nonprofits and the human services organizations we have in Carroll. All of us, I think, are breathing a sigh of relief because of the great job you do. Thank goodness we don't have to fully fund through our local government funds because we would all be in deep water. Um, but again, uh, the book I referred to earlier, more or less, I am taking it seriously. Um, at, at the end of that section, at the end of every chapter, it says, so, enough talk, go do something. And I'll give you an example of that. Yesterday I went and visited the South Carroll High School robotics team, and walking around and seeing what they had, um, I looked at, they're a little short on wire and they're a little short on hardware. Well, in my manufacturing company, we have plenty of scrap wire and we always have hardware rolling around. So we're gonna put together some packages and we're gonna use our excess to fill their need. And I think that's a great philosophy in working forward. Liberals of both parties attack me because I move the conservative agenda forward in Carroll County. Perhaps it's time to hear what conservatives are saying. Dan Bongino said, quote, Commissioner Rothschild always comes armed with the facts. Senator Pipkin said, we need more Republicans like Rich that are willing to play offense against bad liberal policies. The Institute on the Constitution said, we see Rothschild as a public official who has taken his oath of office seriously and has the temerity to stand up in defense of the Constitution. On the other hand, my opponent is endorsed by labor unions. Why? Because they know they cannot manipulate me. I hold an MBA and understand budgeting complexities, but you don't need a finance degree to see the problem. Government cannot continue to give more tax dollars to everyone. That's why we need conservatives that will stop growing government. You see, I believe the shortage of money in government is not the problem, it is the solution. A shortage of money results in government becoming more efficient and shrinking back within its boundaries, which returns our freedoms to us. 
My name is Richard Rothschild. You can visit me at richardrothschild.org. Thank you, and may God bless each and every one of you. Sean Schaefer for District 4. The fact that we're here tonight talking to nonprofits about their funding shows that our e local economy is not recovering, that people need your services because they cannot afford it themselves. The help wanted signs that might be all over 97 or 140 are all for stores, restaurants, and other positions that are unskilled and require very little education to perform. Yet those spaces are still open and the only businesses we bring to this county are more shopping centers, more places where you can uh, spend your money as opposed to earn any or make anything. We need to focus on our industry. We need to bring in more manufacturing. And we need to increase the wages of our workers so that way they can afford to support themselves and not have re rely upon the nonprofits of our county. Good evening. Thank you all for attending, and thanks for the uh, host of this event tonight. You know, I'm more interested in what Steve Guthrie and Lynn Wheeler and Mike McMullen and people in our community have to say about candidates than Dan Bongino and other people that are not in our community at all. This budget is a good example of how to keep our county strong by balancing conservative values and getting the job done. I'm very proud of it. I'm proud of the lead Commissioner Shoemaker and I took on it, the support from Commissioner Roush on the critical issues of this vote. And I will tell you that going forward, we can keep Carroll Strunk County strong if you take the right action. We need you to act. And so I want to ask for your vote tonight because I will do what I've done for four years, go back and look at the record, fight for education, nonprofits, veterans, small businesses. So I ask for your vote, but I also ask you to give me Steve Wance in District 1, Bar Biller in District 4, and uh, Rick Dick Weaver in District 2. And uh, we need a board that understands that we need to look to the future and keep Carroll County strong. And I ask for your support and my vote and, and, and all of those as well. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all. You made my job really easy over there. I, mean, I didn't have to kind of come up and stop anybody. Nobody really went over. It was really good. Uh, again, I'd like to thank you all for coming, for sharing with us here today. And I'd like to thank everyone uh, here as well. Uh, in my short time as the president of the Carroll County Chamber of Commerce, about three and a half years, I've got a chance to know a lot of the nonprofits in the area and a lot of the folks who work there. And to be, I've lived in this community for like 25 years. And I really didn't know any because I worked in Baltimore or someplace around the state or up in Philly. Uh, and um, this is really about you right now. We're talking about the nonprofits. And I just want to tell you how impressed I am with the passion that you have. Uh, you believe in what you do. You love what you do, the causes. You certainly don't do it for the accolades. You certainly don't do it uh, for the actual glory. And you certainly don't do it for the big fat uh, actual pay paychecks that you get to bring, <laughs> that you get to bring home. Um, so I want to thank you. You 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 uh, fill a great need. It seems like everybody up here feels the same way that you do fill a need, and um, I just uh, I'm I'm always impressed. I, I see some of you working. I've got one specific neighbor, Tammy. She was right behind, uh, you know, where our office is, and I see her. I mean, if I get there really early, I feel like man, I'm getting in early. She's already there. And if I'm leaving late, I'm like, well, I work late today. She's always there. So, Tammy, don't work so much. You need to take it easy once in a while. You're going to burn out. But uh, once again, thank you. Thank you to our wonderful moderators over here, uh, Mr. Jeppe, uh, Do Dr. Smith. How about a round of applause for them? <laughs> Am I missing anything, or are we going to let people leave? I guess you can hang around here and talk for a while. To uh, all the actual candidates, I have a handout that they've asked me, and I'll bring it around to you. But thank you again for coming.